All right. So I understand. Hi, Miss Veronica at veronicadrake.com. I understand my boy's been pestering you. Hi, Eric. He has. He's been anxious to go. All right. Good. Now, I will say that I admit I have no idea anything about Sri Lanka and what's going on there. But for the Sri Lankans, this is, of course, very important. So I'll just go ahead and ask these questions submitted by the community. All right. Number one. What purpose is this current situation serving from a spiritual point of view? What caused it led to it like a presence of a collective shadow or what? So Eric says, um, to keep it simple, it's, it's globally happening, but oh. it's more pronounced here. Everything is coming to a head. Hmm. It's as if he, he's showing me, it's as if you put a, a, a cleaning agent in the water and all of the muck and scum rises to the top interesting wow is it is there a collective shadow what well, i don't even know what that means he said it? he said let's define what a collective shadow is a collective shadow as he's helping me understand a collective shadow is a heaviness a darkness in thought in mentality in action and in being so oh. yes in that sense oh, interesting how long will it take for the golden dawn or transformation to take place? There's no way of knowing that, he says. It's, it's, it's free will. It, he's using the, um, the, the term evolution, but it's evolution based on free will. And so you can have the majority tip in that favor uh, yeah. and then it will work, but it's free will and getting everyone in alignment. I'm just gonna look at what's going on here. Um, what is going to be the outcome of the protest going on and, and what should the constructive focus and strategy be of those protests? Mm -hmm. So Eric says, like everything, we can never know a definitive outcome because everything is based on free will. But he says, mm -hmm. let's look at it contractually for the geographical area. Okay. He says contractually, they're following protocol, they're following suit, they're following the contract. This is a place where what we are seeing is precedence for the rest of the world, but not um, in such a great capacity. Oh, because wow. these are 20 some billion or million people, it it won't it it's proportional he says and it won't be as impactful in smaller pockets well apparently the the um the economy has just collapsed they defaulted on their bonds or loans or whatever and the protests right now are going against the president i don't even want to try to say his name i'm probably going to be made to in these questions somewhere uh, basically, the government has mismanaged the economy. They can't even buy oil um, and they need it. They have blackouts up to 10 hours a day, not enough fuel, um, not enough of the essential items that families need, et cetera. So their protests are just, oh my God, that's terrible. Well, and I think what Eric is alluding to is when he says the scum rising to the top uh, is yeah. his beautiful, uh, elegant way <laughs> of saying. <laughs> Um, you know, all the dirt comes out in the laundry. And this is basically what's happening. He says to be very clear, yeah. this is human greed. Oh, so the government is the scum, basically. That's what I'm understanding Eric oh. to be saying, yes. What have they been taking money from, the, from their own coffers? Yes, and it's, um, he's saying it's more, um, uh, it's not even that they know what they're doing because yeah. managing the government, they don't really know what they're doing, but the bigger part is they don't care what they're doing. Uh -huh. And so the bottom line is how fat can I get? How much can I take? How much can I hoard? Um, to what end though, Eric says. Really? 11 hours ago, there was a, a headline here. Um, fans go wild. Oh no, that's cricket. Never mind. After a win, I don't know if they. All right. So, what are the short and long-term solutions to this current socio-economic disaster in Sri Lanka? Well, Eric says the short-term solution is that we pay attention. 
we as a collective, as a whole, as, you know, our country, other countries, because he says, to be clear, this could have and will have, most likely, a domino effect around the world. Oh. Now, not in the sense that it's going to bump into us uh, literally, but he says what they're experiencing, we are already starting to experience in our own economy. Oh, boy. Okay, uh, what should be done to, um, okay, what about long-term solutions? So long-term solutions, Eric says that the, the best long-term solution there is, is to educate people, to educate people on, you know, again, he says, go back to basics. You know, who are you, who are you in, in the whole scheme of things? What do you believe in? And in some countries, he said, in some places, there isn't fairness and there isn't a, a, a system where democracy rules and people get choice. Um, he says the other involvement here with Sri Lanka is China. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. okay. So he said that the connection, uh, it's like this. He's showing me it's like this. China has the puppet strings, and, oh, cool. but, but, but it's China, not as a whole, China, the China, China, the government of China is pulling the, the puppet strings of the leaders of Sri Lanka, and, and it's it's money. Oh, okay. So they're paying them off to do what? To what end? What, what does China want Chinese, the Chinese government want from well, Sri Lanka? I, I believe what Eric is saying is they want um, mindset. They want control. They want, um, it's not about taking it over because China no. certainly doesn't want to take Sri Lanka over, yeah. but it's more like the, the more we build our masses, the bigger we get, the more powerful we are. Like-minded is what they're looking for. Okay. Yeah, the, the uh, diplomatic ties between Sri Lanka and China have been very close, especially during Sri Lanka Freedom Par Party governments. Uh, okay, the, in 1957, they established that rule. Um, but it's it's Eric says it's underground sinister. It's not like there's any good to come from. And China, he says, now I, I'm just gonna I'm the messenger, so don't shoot me. Um, be careful trusting China. Oh God, yes. Well, the people are fine, but but not the CCP. Correct. Okay. Uh what should be done to change the political leadership and bring in new leaders who can lead the country to peace and prosperity? And, um, Eric says, unfortunately, you're seeing it. It's an it's an overthrow. It's a um, the, the he says the phrase is power to the people. In other words, Good. it's going to get way ugly before it gets way better. Um, but the only way to take it back is to stand up and not take it anymore. Yeah, power to the people. There's a lot of there, there's a lot of. Um, uh, a, a cornering, if you will, like a, um, um, it, there's like familial, this is not just one person. This is a familial oh. experience where, okay, you're my brother, you're my uncle, you're my cousin. And, and, and this leadership is built on the greed to very incestual. Him. Correct. Okay. Uh, how should parliament be restructured? There isn't a clear cut answer for the restructuring yet because you don't know how it's going to shake out. Yeah. In terms of, are they gonna follow um, tradition, traditional parliament or, um, because I believe they were under British rule or perhaps. Yeah, British I'm pretty rule. sure, yeah. Uh, um, so, so Eric says they may just create their own sense of government but still being under the same umbrella so it has yet to be determined okay uh when the entire nation is demanding for the sri lankan president oh now i do have to say the name mr gotabaya raja pakse his family members holding political position and their supporters to step down why are they still holding on to power uh, what what would be the consequence if they refuse to go home as the protesters are demanding. So yeah, you, you got it. This 
Mm -hmm. sexual. Well, like Eric says, there's no, there's no, uh, this is an interesting word because this also is, has a form of corruption. There's no policing of this event. Mm. It's like one hand is dirtier than the next. And so, you know, money and greed are far reaching. Eric says, essentially, until there's a full blown, full blown war, Mm. It, there's not going to be change. There's uh, not going to be. Any, it's almost like an overthrow. Uh, you know, yeah. well, it is an overthrow. Yeah. Yeah. Like they did in, in Cuba. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah. they put in Castro. All right. Whatever. But he says, to be clear, there isn't one easy answer. And there is spiritual meaning for all of this nonsense that goes on in the world. And is that just the scum rushing to the top so it can be removed kind of yeah because how else do you clear out he shows me the image of like when you have a pool and you're using a skimmer right oh, yeah you, you get all the the debris and all the yucky off the top but before you can do that it has to everything has to have a settling point right and it'll get there it'll look like it's settling and then you go in and you scoop it up that may be when the coup or, you know, the taking over, he says, really can happen. Not anytime soon, unfortunately. What uh, what other places in the world is the same thing going uh, on? A very similar thing is going on in Ukraine. Mm, Okay. Ukraine, yep. And we've seen, we've seen parallels to this through the Middle East. We, Mm. you know, this is something that is, Ever since the beginning of time, Eric says, some form, some level of this has been going on because humans veer off the path and greed becomes uh, paramount. And and the desire for freedom is strong. And Mm -hmm. that's really the only... It's our inherent Lord. nature to want to be free, right? Yeah. We, we want that. And, you know, the, the, here's the thing with this particular situation, he says, in Sri Lanka. Um, there was no education other than what drink the Kool-Aid, drink the Kool-Aid. This is what you're getting. And that was all they knew. And then whoop, all of a sudden we knew different and we see different, you know. The yeah. fish doesn't know there's life outside of water until it jumps Ooh. up. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Eric. Yeah. What about Russia? Is the same thing going going to happen there? Um, Absolutely. It's a form. It's a variation of it. And from a spiritual perspective, what we're doing is we're watching the scum rise to the top. You know, uh, uh, not to to intersect the two situations, but Eric says Putin thought he was going to march in there and it was going to be wham, bam. And It certainly hasn't because Eric says in the end, good will prevail. Yeah. You know, you have the, you have on, on one side, certain people who are motivated by greed and therefore are corrupt. But then on the other hand, you have the natural uh, desire of the soul to be free. Sure. So Absolutely. I think we're just having this a good They're colliding. Good evil. It's right. colliding. That's yeah. that, that's that's a simple way to put what the hell's going on in the world. All right. So the spiritual thing is good against evil. Yeah. It, it's right. It's is age old story. It's as old as man. Yeah, that's true. Uh, will there be a military regime in Sri Lanka as a consequence of this current political upheaval? Eric says absolutely. That's where we see the you know the people. Are, are, are going to be the military. Oh, the, okay. The, the oh, everyday, okay. okay, I'm going to eat my dinner, then I'm going to go to war. It's literally going to be that way. Also, if you know, uh, parts of that was how it is in Ukraine. Yeah. Mm. All right. Decades of mismanagement of, co- co- of the country's resources and power uh, struggles between and among various castes, religions, and ethnicities ha- have now culminated in food scarcities, economic strife, adult aggressiveness, violation of child protection that has led to child sex trafficking and the use of drugs. What could be done to protect the dignity of the child in Sri Lanka? You know, Eric is saying to me, you you always present optimistic. You always, you know, give the message in an optimistic way. and, Mm -hmm. and, And we're struggling. He and I are struggling with how to bring this forward because it isn't a nice message, but sometimes it just has to be this way. Um, Unfortunately, 
they're victims right now. And that's just the way it is because, and this breaks my heart and mm -hmm. Eric also, they're the highest commodity that they have that mm. people can make money on their children. Unfortunately, this, sickness prevails. Did, um, do these children, do they sign up for this as a spiritual contract, many of them? So contractually, Eric says, no one signs up to be a sex slave or, but, but the way circumstances play out, the, these children may need to know isolation they may need to know degradation. They may need to know abandonment. They may need to know abuse. And how they get there is based on the free will circumstances that they're raised in. So a child in the U.S., let's say, may have signed up to experience um, things, but they most likely aren't going to experience the same thing as a, a, a child in Sri Lanka or okay. India. You know, how these um, contracts play out is very specific to a lot of factors. The Rajapakse clan in Sri Lanka, well, I always pronounce things with a Spanish accent when I don't know how to pronounce it. You do it very well though. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> clan in Sri Lanka has siphoned the country's wealth as well as gold belonging to citizens. Some wealth apparently invested in Uganda as well as Pandora papers showing evidence of their offshore dealings. What needs to be done to get the wealth that they've siphoned off back into the country's treasury and to their other rightful owners? Complete collapse. Yeah. Eric says, unfortunately, it's like you break it all down. It falls all the way down. And you, you it's almost easier sometimes, you know, to, to, to completely level a house than to go in and patch it. And unfortunately, this is the case here. Okay, is there some something, some part of the divine team that is helping the Sri Lankans, an archangel or a group of archangels? Or... Archangel Michael, are, are you kidding me? Archangel Michael, like when, when, when you said this is what we were going to do, the first archangel that came in was Archangel Michael. I mean, yeah, you know, I he's love got him. the sword, you know, the sword of justice. Yeah. Um, uh, it's like the team is on full, full time. They're on overload. Okay, yeah. good. Well, we thank them for that. Considering Sri Lanka's past with regard to various ethnic upheavals and war, youth uh, upheaval in, 19, in April 1971, the terror years during the late 1980s and early 1990s, what is the best way for Sri Lanka to heal? Mm -hmm. What are the best ways and avenues to bring peace and share the messages of healing with the uh, people of Sri Lanka? So Eric, um, oh, he just showed me this image where they're standing like this, persons are standing like this, and they're linking arm to arm to arm. And it's Hindus, and it's Catholics, and it's Buddhist, and it's, uh, it just goes on, and it's Muslims, and it's Islam, it's like all of these are now linking as one, there is no more religious division that's the byproduct of all of this okay. they've come together and eric says that has happened okay i am i am inspired to create suwa mandala healing mandala for the current situation in sri lanka and i'm in the process this this is the person i think that generated all these questions and i'm in the process of channeling the necessary information would this suwa mandala be effective in contributing to the healing of the situation in any way and if so, how should it be used? Eric says, absolutely. It's almost like what he's showing me. It's almost like an altar. It's almost oh. like a, a, a sacred space to take your prayers, to take and focus your energy. Yeah. It's energy that's going to heal. You and I know that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's energy. So so Eric it's, says, let's... It's like this, like oh, geometric. Oh, yeah. Uh, Beautiful. yeah, it's, a, it's like so sacred it, geometry. Kind of. everything has power to it you know if there's she's going to introduce color to it that has its own frequency if there's numbers oh, yeah. everything has its own frequency hmm. so eric says we know at the end of the day energy heals energy heals hmm. everything our thoughts are energy so eric says he's inviting everyone watching this video to put a positive intention loving thought out to yeah. sri lanka yeah and maybe, you know, you can actually get mandalas at online 
and you know put the intent behind it and, and use that. Uh, what is China's future role in Sri Lanka? Yeah, Eric says, you know, we kind of touched on that earlier, and uh, we don't necessarily know what China's plans are yet, although we are okay. certain there are sinister, manipulative, but, but Eric says, here's the thing, if the people are strong enough, and if the people can raise up and, and walk in a space where they take it back, China won't have a chance. Okay. China wants total world domination. <sighs> but here's the thing, so does Russia. And so these two dominating factors, they say they might join up and oh, I'll kiss you and you kiss me. Yeah. But they're 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 this right here. And they're oh, gonna yeah. eliminate each other because of greed. Oh geez. Will Sri Lanka stay independent? If the current government changes, will there be a peaceful transition of power? Um Eric says absolutely, and it is possible. It's okay. all dependent on the people. Okay. Will there ever be equality of the sexes in Sri Lanka? Oh. What would the future treatment of minorities be in the country? Disabled people, LB, uh, LGBTQ plus people. In other words, will there be racial and religious tolerance and harmony in the future? Gosh, I think we could ask that question about the whole world. I know. I mean, you yeah. know, it's, it's really... You know, Eric says it's just not limited to Sri Lanka. Oh, it's, no, no. It's really not. And unfortunately, we'd like to say, oh, kumbaya, sure it will. But the reality is we live in a world of duality. There's yeah. always going to be the duality. We're not meant for oneness yet on this planet. Well, we're working we're, in, we're just in the age of Aquarius. So, you know, the, the consciousness, instead of duality consciousness, we're entering a phase where it's unity consciousness. We're getting there. We're getting there. For so sure. are, you, are we talking hundreds of years? Mm, you know, he says it, it, it'll come in increments. Okay. And it'll come right. in spurts. But no, it won't be hundreds of years. Okay. He says it's like, um, he shows me a group of people. There's a group of bodies. And it takes one body in the center to be the illumination. Okay. And we are doing that. We have pockets of illuminators around the world right? And yep. so there will be illuminators in Sri Lanka. But right now, he says, it's almost impossible because when someone is in survival mode, whether it's their personal survival, or they perceive they're in survival, they're being threatened, they operate on a different frequency, a different yeah. energy, which does is not conducive to shining the light. Exactly. Uh, we're in this... The, still in that survival of the fittest by competition, a duality instead of surviving as a collective by uniting and collaborating. People don't get that. Around. They don't get that we are stronger in numbers. Yeah. All right. Who is uh, Ghana Aka? And who, what is she channeling for Sri Lanka's president, Gotabaya? I don't. Uh, please explain her spiritual powers. Why are the country's leaders so blind by her? What role does she, her power play in the destiny of the country? So let me see what that is. Maybe some spiritual, um, let me see. So Eric says it's nothing um, significant and he's, he's doing this, like he's knocking, like, hello, is there anybody home? Like people are believing things, meaning that she has some sort of quote it's unquote Power. She's a soothsayer. A what? A soothsayer. Sri Lanka's ruling uh, so and so uh, Raja Paksa mafia turned to goddess Kali imitating Ganaka's divine. Um, pages on Ganaka, soothsayer says. So I, I think she's a, a soothsayer. Well, Kali is a goddess, is a Hindu goddess. Okay, all right. So I, I don't, you know, Eric says it's not, it's nothing solid, nothing that okay. really means anything. Okay. <clears throat> what does Sri Lanka need to learn from the process that is unfolding currently? Uh, to claim its own to not put all its eggs in one basket, to not let things get out of control, not take it out of the hands of the people. 
Right. Um, not to sit by and be passive about anything, to stand up and exercise their voice. Okay. I think we all could hear that. I know. This really does apply to the entire world. Yeah. How can Sri Lankan people raise their level of consciousness? Again, Eric says it's not something that'll happen now because they're in survival mode. Yeah. Uh, but raising their level of consciousness is really going to be a byproduct of all of this because of the outreach, the outpouring of help, people who are going to send supplies, people who are going to help them rebuild. That's not just the, the people that are closest to them. It's a global effort. Yeah. They well, got into this mess because of money. And the only way to get out of it, Eric says, is to stop worshiping money. Yeah. All right. Uh Okay. Will other countries, we sort of touched on this, experience the difficulties of Sri, Sri Lanka or something similar in the coming months or years? Yeah, absolutely. We did talk about that. Yeah, and, what, and what should the global community learn from the situation in Sri Lanka? I think we covered that too. Any other remarks yeah. on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, Eric just says that for sure the spotlight's on Sri Lanka. It was on Ukraine. Now it's on Sri Lanka. It's going to take these little pockets around yeah. the world. And I say little relative to like the US or, you know, right. these little pockets, he says, around the world a, a, until the big the big players really get it, really hear it. What do you mean? Well, because we're going to we're witnessing the demise, the falling down, the yeah. crumbling of, he says, and we, we look at it and we go, huh, 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 you know, like, oh, you know, well, let's send some rice or whatever we're going to do, you know, to help or right, some right. milk or some, you know, let them eat. But the reality is we, he says, talking about we as a nation, um, we got complacent since 2011. Yeah. 9-11, rather, 2001. We got yeah. complacent. 9-11 is not far enough behind us, but yet we've put it out we're complacent yeah. he says stop being complacent yeah we've become isolated and yeah. not caring about the rest of the world as much as we should basically yeah. what spiritual contracts do the leaders of the political parties have with the current president uh Gotabaya, and the prime minister mahina uh, uh mahina his brother so mm -hmm. spiritual contracts of the leaders of political parties with the current president and his brother. His See, it's minister. really, Eric says, it's really difficult to decipher or discern the spiritual contracts because they're so not anywhere near them. They're just, oh. they're in a cesspool. It's like, wow. you know, okay. we could sit here, we'd need a whole hour show to decipher oh. and discern what those yeah. contracts are because they are so not evident. Okay. What con uh, spiritual contracts does Sri Lanka have with China, India, Russia, and the U Ukraine? And how could any of the negative ties be broken? Um, wait, say that again. My my, I got distracted. My phone was uh, buzzing here, and I, okay. I got distracted. What spiritual contracts uh, do Sri Lanka does Sri Lanka have with China, India, Russia, and Ukraine? What spiritual yeah. contracts? Yeah, and, and how and how could those, any negative ties be broken? Mm -hmm. So the spiritual contracts are, we are all one, right? Like yeah. we're, we're going to lock arms. We're going to stand tall. We're going to, you know, and those spiritual contracts are bastardized by greed and gluttony and, yeah. and, 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 and all of that stuff. And they have that with, we, as human beings, we have that with each other, but when we neglect, right, when we neglect to nurture ourselves, we don't honor our own contract. That's why a lot of people come to me and, and, and Eric and they want to know what's my spiritual contract. Sometimes it's not so crystal clear to see that. Yeah, right. I, unfortunately. Well, that was the last question, but uh, Eric, what else can you say to help give us some spiritual wisdom concerning um, this disastrous situation in Sri Lanka, formerly known as Ceylon, I think. Um, Eric says the most important thing is that we never give up hope, that we never lose our faith in humanity's ability to be the spiritual 
backbone for the divine, for the creator. We are, he says, and he, he includes himself, we are the walking, talking embodiment of all that is. Wow. And we, we need to start acting like that. Right. We need to uh, not only just understand on the intellectual le um, level that we must live our life in love, but we need to live. I mean, behave that way. So, yeah, absolutely. Because you can say one thing, but it's really about walking your talk. Yes, yeah. exactly. Veronica, is there anything else you would like to say? Veronica, Veronica Drake.com. No, I, I listen, I have to say that I am very pleased with, with what we brought forward here. And yes, Eric says to just say that um, he hopes that everybody hears this message loud and clear and that everybody tailors it and personalizes it in their own life so that we can make a better world. Yes. Well said. All right. I love you all. Bye. Bye. Y'all be sure to share and um, subscribe and just smash the notification button. Bye-bye.